Oh, for heaven's sake. Here's a letter, Ma, for you. Who's it from? Aren't you going to read it? Well, your pa and the boys will be in soon. We might as well wait. We'll just have to read it again when Pa gets here. Oh, please, Ma, it's for you. You've got to write. Aren't you dying to know what's in it? Seems to me you're the one that's dying. Dragonwick, May 19th, 1844. My dear cousin Abigail. Nicholas Van Rijn. Who's that? Shh, Tibby. Read the letter, Ma. Though we have never met, we are related, as you doubtless know, through our mutual grandmother, Anna Chigansavant. My wife and I have decided to invite one of your daughters into our home for an extended visit. We shall naturally be able to offer her many advantages which she could not hope to enjoy in her present station. In return, if she pleases, she may serve as a companion to our eight-year-old child, Katrine. Upon inquiry, I have been gratified to find that you and your husband enjoy the honor and respect of your little community. Be so good as to let me know at your earliest convenience which of your daughters you select, and I will make all suitable arrangements for her journey to Dragonwick. Respectfully yours, Nicholas Van Rijn. Golly! Is he really your cousin? Now, don't go imagining yourselves a couple of lost duchesses. There's not a drop of Van Rijn blood in any of us. It doesn't make any difference to me, I'm sure. But you had the same grandmother. She was... Let me see. My grandfather was her second husband. Her first one died. His name was Van Rijn. Nicholas must be his grandson. He's a patroon. A patroon? Cousin Nicholas? What's a patroon? That's what they call the owners of those enormous land grants on the Hudson River. They're the descendants of the original Dutch patroons. And they're terribly rich and elegant. He must be very important. I remember reading three or four years ago about his visiting President Van Buren at the White House. But you haven't said yet, Ma, whether I could go. The subject hadn't come up yet that I know of. I think it unlikely that your pa will approve. He's more likely to if you do. And if we do decide to let one of you go, why not Tibby? Me? She wouldn't want to go, would you, Tibby? I'm sure there isn't anything I want that I can't find right here. I'm not anxious to leave my home. That's not fair. You know I love you and Pa, all of you, and my home. It's just that, well, I try to be like everyone else and want what I'm supposed to want. But then I start thinking about people I've never known and places I've never been. Maybe if the letter hadn't come, I... Oh, I don't know. I must be loony. I'm I was killing a hen for supper. You scour the drain board. No use mooning over it. Your pa'll do whatever he and the Lord think best. There's one thing you can be sure of. They'll both feel the same way about it. This day, O oh Lord, there has come to me a matter of some slight perplexity. Deliver us, we pray, from hankering after flesh pots. And deliver us from vanity and false pride. However, thy will be done. Keep and preserve us through the night. Amen. All right, boys, get. Tom? Yes, Paul? You water the stock and look to Whiteface. She's freshening. Yes, Paul. Tibby, is Obadiah Brown likely to come mooning around again tonight? Oh, Pa, I'm sure I have no notion of his plans. Well, if he does turn up, be sure and sit on the steps where your Ma can keep an eye on you. Although I must say that Bob is a steady lad, and you, praise be, are not the flighty kind. Thank you, Pa. Now, about this letter. I'd see no reason even to discuss it if it wasn't that your Ma acts like it was important. It is important, Ephraim. It might be a good thing for Randy to live for a while in a great house and learn something of the world outside this farm. I'd so like to go, Pa. Your opinion is of no consequence whatever, miss. You haven't the sense of a tomtit. You're past 18 pretty enough and time you got settled down with a man. I don't know what's the matter with you. As for this fine relation of yours, I'd like to know what right he's got to be making inquiries about us. He doesn't mean it that way, I'm sure. Perhaps the gentry have different ways of saying things. Since when do we have gentry in this country where all men are free and equal? A Yankee farmer is as good and maybe a little better than any Dutchman on the Hudson River. We'll say no more about it. Oh, Pa, listen, please. I have a feeling, a feeling that the letter was kind of a sign. I think the Lord wants me to go. You know what you're saying? During worship tonight, I had a leading. Truly, I did. At least put it to the test, Pa, please, and see what happens. Are you speaking the truth? Search your heart. 
Very well. Close your eyes. Now open the book. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and took bread and a bottle of water and gave it unto Hagar, putting it on her shoulder and the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. Well, it's none too fitting, but it does seem to have some bearing. I'll sleep over the matter and pray on it. Come, Abby. You know, this is the first time I've ever known the Lord to go back on your path. Letter for us to meet him at the Astra House. And this is it. And a less fit place for God fearing people to meet, I can't imagine. Come ahead. And uh, what can I do for you, my good man? Are you the tavern keeper? This is not a tavern, and I am not a keeper, my good man. And I am not your good man. We were to meet a Mr. Nicholas Van Ryan. Perhaps you can Mr. tell Mr. Nicholas Van Ryan? But of course, you must be Mr. and Miss Wells. A thousand pardons. How stupid of me not to have known it once. If you will do me the honor to come with me, please. Mr. Van Ryan regrets that he is not here to greet you, but he has directed that you're to have everything you wish. Everything. What's all this? Dinner, sir. I didn't order any. Mr. Van Ryan ordered dinner served at this time, sir. Mr. Van Ryan is not here. Yes, sir. Oh, it's beautiful. The food looks as if it had been painted. Wouldn't surprise me a bit. That's the strangest fruit. It's cold when I eat it and warm when I swallow. Let me taste that. I thought so. It's got spirits in it. Just a little bit, and it's so good. Even a little bit of evil cannot be good, Miranda. Don't be too impatient with me. You won't have to hear me preach to you much longer. It's not that I'm impatient, Pa, really. But after Mr. Van Ryan went to all this trouble... It's no trouble to be wasteful. And there's something peculiar about a man who orders supper someplace when he's someplace else. How did he know what I wanted to eat? But there's everything here you could possibly want. Everything is what no man should ever want. Yes, Pa. We won't be alone much longer, Miranda. I want you to read with me. I will sing of, of mercy, mercy and, and judgment. judgment. Unto, Unto thee, O oh Lord, Lord, will I sing. sing. I will, I will walk. I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It, sh it shall not cleave to me. A froward heart shall depart from me. I will not know a wicked person. More coffee, Cousin Miranda? No, thank you. You, sir? No, thanks. The music is very nice. I understand they've opened the dining terrace for public dancing. It would be fun to watch. 
I don't know what made me think you'd be a much older man, Mr. Van Ryan. You've mentioned my age several times now, sir. Does it affect your confidence in me? Alexander the Great, when he was younger than I, had conquered most of the world. Maybe if he'd been a little older, he'd have conquered all of it, or maybe he'd have had the good sense not to try in the first place. Aristotle was his teacher, Mr. Wells, but I'm sure he put things less clearly than you. Tell me, young man, what are your politics? My politics? Since Van Buren is a New Yorker, I imagine you folks up along the Hudson are mostly for him. Martin's an old friend and neighbor of mine. Naturally, if he's nominated, my farmers will vote for him. What do you mean, your farmers? The tenant farmers on my land. There are nearly 200 of them. I never heard of tenant farmers. Don't they own their own land? No, it belongs to me. It belonged to my father and his father, back to the first patroon who took title in 1630. I permit the farmers to work my land, and they, in return, pay me a yearly tribute and a share of their produce. But uh, they can buy the land they've been working if they want to. No. Why not? Because it belongs to me. As a farmer, I'd rather own one half acre of barren rock, free and clear, than work the richest land in the world for someone else. I dare say we don't understand each other's viewpoint. I dare say. Cousin Nicholas, is that the new wall stands they're dancing down there? It sounds very much like one. It doesn't look improper at all. Do you dance the waltz? Miranda. Yes, Cousin Miranda, I dance the waltz, but never in a public place. Oh. Our politics may not jibe, young man, but I like your manners. Well, some good may come to you out of this venture after all. I'm glad you think so, sir. Now well, it's time for bed. Don't forget your prayers, Miranda. No, Pa. Good night. Good night, Cousin Nicholas. Good night. Cousin Miranda. Yes? On occasion, we dance the waltz at Dragonwick. Good night. Done with your bonnet. How can you sit there so quietly? I should think that seeing Dragonwick would be more thrilling to you than to anyone. Nothing can be thrilling that is shared with so many other people. Did you like what you saw? I'm afraid I've run out of words. I've said beautiful so often this afternoon. Every now and then you say golly. I prefer beautiful. I'll try to remember. Do you mind if I keep my bonnet off just a minute? The breeze feels so wonderful against my face. Tell me about Dragonwick. How many rooms? I've never counted them. And lots of servants? I've never counted them, I've... Golly, I mean, imagine. The breeze must feel wonderful indeed with a face as beautiful as yours against it. Thank you, Magda. This is Miss Wells. Magda is our housekeeper. How do you do? I assume Mrs. Van Ryan is at dinner. Yes, my dear. And you'll be pleased at how well she's looking. Not that Madame isn't always a picture. See that Katrine comes to the dining hall. Will you come this way, Cousin Miranda? Don't you think I'd better go to my room first? I, I must look hardly presentable. To my wife, promptness at meals is the highest human virtue. Yes, as you see, I'm back. 
I didn't know I would have waited. And here is cousin Miranda. Oh, welcome to Dragonwick, child. Thank you. Will you sit here, cousin Miranda? Thank you. Did you have a pleasant trip, Nicholas? Yes, very. Miss Wells has had practically nothing to eat today, Tompkins. I'd suggest you serve her at once. At once, Mania. I trust you'll be happy here. It's most kind of you to let me come. And my mother and father wish to be remembered. I'm sure they're most worthy people. And I'm sure you'll be a good girl. Oh, Nicholas. Yes, my dear? You didn't forget the pastries, did you? Of course not, my dear. Those wonderful New York pastries. Nicholas. Yes. Did you bring the Napoleons, the honey puffs, and the mocha bonbons? All of them, my dear. I think I'll have the bonbons before going to bed. Tompkins, serve the honey puffs after dinner, but be sure they're well chilled. Yes, madame. And shall we keep the Napoleons for tomorrow? For my lunch. After dinner, you'd best go find Catherine. You might read her a story. I... We can hardly ask our guest to occupy herself with the child tonight. She must be tired. As you say. Oh, there you are, pet. Don't shuffle your feet when you walk. And you're a naughty girl to stay away so much. I never can keep track of you. Have you had your dinner? Yes, Mama. This is your cousin Miranda, Katrine. Hello, Katrine. It would be courteous to return her greeting, don't you think? Katrine and I are going to have a lot of fun together. Aren't we? Yes, Cousin Miranda. May I go now, Mama? Oh, I suppose so. She was my great-grandmother, Azild. Azild? That's a strange name. She looks like... like a frightened child. I don't know why we keep her hanging there. And that ugly old harpsichord is just an eyesore. The servants have to be driven to dust it. You think it was going to bite them? She was from New Orleans. She and my great-grandfather were married there in 1743. Yes, I, I imagine it was one of those sudden romantic adventures. Tell me some more about them, Cousin Nicholas. Azild and your great-grandfather. Did they fall in love at first sight? No Van Ryan does anything at first sight. But she must have been happy to live here. As it turned out, it didn't matter. Soon after their son was born, she died. She brought this harpsichord with her from her home. She played it always. If you listen to the servants, they'll have you believe she still does. <laughs> Fortunately, we don't listen to servants or to their superstitions. Oh, oh, no, of course not. I... 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 Isn't it rather late, Nicholas? Perhaps we should... I shall stay up for a while, but if you wish to retire, my dear. Yes, I... I think I will. Well, good night, then. Good night. Good night. I think I have some new music that will please you more than Van Beethoven, Cousin Miranda. You can sing as I play. Oh, no, really. Of course I can't. you can. The lyrics are printed on the sheet. I dreamt that I dwelt in marble halls with vassals and serfs at my side. And of all who assembled, within those walls, that I was the hope and the pride. I had riches too great to count, could boast of a high ancestral name, but I also dreamt, which pleased me most, that you love me still the same, that you love me still the same. 
You read the words with an extraordinary understanding. I've never seen them before. Then perhaps there is someone at home whom you've promised to love still the same? Oh, no. It is getting late. I'm sure you've had an exhausting day. I shall have Magda show you to your room. Thank you. Good night, then. Good night, Cousin Nicholas. Since we are not really cousins, I can see no reason why we should continue to call ourselves so. Good night, Miranda. Good night. Have you had a pleasant evening, miss? Oh, yes. This is a lovely room, isn't it? Yes, it is. An unusual room. It's unusually beautiful. That isn't what I mean, miss. I do have such a time making myself understood. It's what she brought to this room and what'll never leave it. Was she very young? About as young as you. She must have been very proud to be mistress of Dragonwick. He never loved her. He never wanted her at all. He wanted their son. He kept her from him. He forbade her to sing and play. He broke her heart and drove it... She prayed for disaster to come to the Van Rynes. And she swore that when it came, she'd always be here to sing and play. She killed herself in this room. This harpsichord. That's just kitchen gossip. Oh, you mustn't take me seriously, miss. No one ever does. May I take you to your room now? Thank you. Of course, I've never heard Azeel play myself. They say in the kitchen I never shall. Even when she plays, I should say if she plays. You won't either because you've got Novan Rhine blood. But he'll hear her. And Katrine. Will there be anything else you need, Miss? Oh, no. Thank you. Well, good night, then. Good night, Magda. Miss Wells, why have you come here? Do you think Katrine is in need of a companion? That would be for her father and mother to decide. Don't you think Katrine is in need of a father and a mother? <laughs> that was a silly question, wasn't it? You like it here? Of course I do. Of course you do. You like being waited on. I can see tonight it was the first time. You like peaches out of season. You like the feel of silk sheets against your young body. And one day you will wish with all your heart you'd never come to Dragonwick. Once you get the hang of it. Up, and then a hook, and then a swing to the left, and there you are. Mm hmm. That's right. But Pa's kind of like a teacher to you, isn't he? He's been very kind and helpful to me. What's he like? Your father. Yes. 
Is he nice? But of course he is. Don't you think so? Does he like me? Katrine, what a strange thing to say. Your father and mother both love you very much. Did they tell you that? Why, it's, it's understood. They love you just the way you love them. But I don't love them. That must be the de Greniers. They've come for the Kermis tomorrow. They're staying overnight. The Count's such a funny-looking little man. It isn't polite to stare at Did you say Count? So that's what a Count looks like. So do Barons and Dukes. Tomorrow the house will be packed with them. Papa always has a Fourth of July ball for the River families after the farmers have their kermess. Ball. You'll have a wonderful time. And you can wear the ball dress Papa had sent from New York. But I won't know anyone to talk to or to dance with. Oh, everyone will want to dance with you, Miranda. Golly, I hope so. every year to watch. Sometimes, after Papa leaves, I go and stand near the carousel. Perhaps you shouldn't have come, Katrine. It's wrong, you know, to disobey. Oh, you're just saying that because you're supposed to. Is there anything wrong about the kermesse? No. Could watching it make me a bad girl? I suppose not. Then it's wrong to forbid me to come. That sounds pretty logical to me. Hello, Dr. Turner. Hello, Katrine. This is Miranda. Wells. How do you do, Miss Wells? How do you do? Papa sent for her all the way from Connecticut to be my companion. She's a kind of a very distant cousin, but she's nice. I had no idea that the Van Ryans are born in Connecticut. We're not really cousins, but Mr. Van Ryan was kind enough to invite me to Dragon. Whereabouts in Connecticut? Near Greenwich. But that's all farm country. Sheep and potatoes, mostly. You seem so startled, Doctor. Haven't you ever met anyone who came off a farm? Not anyone who came off a farm to live at Dragonwick. It seems like an odd place for you girls to watch the Kermes. You'd have much more fun over there. But we're really not supposed to be here. We're hiding so Papa doesn't see us. Katrine had a heart set on it. You know how children are about such things. Why, you wanted to see the Kermes even more than I did. Don't worry. I'll keep your secret. Papa will never know from me about either of you. May I have the honor of seeing you again, Miss Wells? Why, yes, if you like. I would like, and soon, if you're sure it won't be too unpleasant for you. Unpleasant? Well, you see, the Patroon and I don't get along very well. In fact, the first thing I've ever known us to agree on is bringing you here. I think that was a fine idea. Well, happy Independence Day. Bye. Oh, I like him so much. I wish he could be my doctor, too, instead of just the farmers. Why doesn't he like your father? Because Papa doesn't like him either. Why not? Papa never says why not. Oh, here they come! What brings you to our Kermes, Dr. Turner? Are you expecting an epidemic of minor injuries? You never can tell, Mr. Van Ryan. This chair came from Holland with the first patroon. It represents, among other things, over 200 years of extreme discomfort. The patroon is ready. The first man will come forward, bringing with him rent and tribute. 
Plus Bleecker, Hill Farm. Rent, winter wheat, and... You have brought nothing with you, Klaus? No. Perhaps your crops were poor. My crops were all right. Take your hat off when you speak to the patroon. I'm a free American citizen. I take my hat off to no man. What you do with your hat is your own concern. Are you ready to pay your rent? No. Nor will you ever again get so much as a grain of wheat from me. It is your purpose, then, to farm my lands and enjoy the privileges I allow you without making any return. Your lands? Did you hear that? His lands! For 200 years, the Bleakers have worked the hill farm. And for longer than that, it has belonged to the Van Rijn. We've paid the worth of it many times over, and you know it. Well, here's the finish. I'm sorry to hear it. But since you feel that way, I order you to leave my land by tomorrow noon. If you are not gone, I shall have the proper authorities put you off. Have the next man step forward. Otto Gebhardt. Won't you reconsider your decision, Mr. Van Rijn? Klaus Bleeker and his wife and children have no home other than this farm. Where will he take them? I see you've come empty-handed, Otto. Have you a reason? You know the reason. It's his birthright as a free citizen of a free country. These men are not alone. The anti-rent movement has swept New York State. Man, take your head out of the sand and help to solve this problem peacefully. Because it's got to be solved, peacefully or not. Speak up, Otto. I'll bring the stuff tomorrow, sir, if that will suit. Will the rest of you men step forward, please? I have something to say. I'm tired of listening and talking and listening! Klaus just lost his head, that's all. He doesn't mean violence any more than the rest of us. I hope you'll overlook this. I suppose I must regard what you did as an effort to save my life, Dr. Turner. And whether or not I regard you as a meddling trespasser, I suppose I must thank you. You've got the facts wrong. The way I see it, you're the trespasser. Also, saving your life wasn't what I had in mind. If Klaus had killed you, it would have done these men infinitely more harm than you could ever do alive. So don't thank me, Mr. Van Ryn. I shall say a few words about what has just happened, and they will be my last. Dr. Turner's efforts to incite anti-rent rebellion in our local district have been well known to me for many months now. Just what is it he wants you to want so passionately? It has an assortment of highly romantic names, the rights of man, life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness and such. And all those will be yours with the titles to a few acres of soil. Believe me, my welfare does not depend upon you. Rather, you depend upon it. But my rents and tributes and my responsibilities are hereditary, the symbols of a way of life to which I have been born and in which I shall continue to live. I shall never relinquish my position. Your pardon, mademoiselle. But are you not Miss Welts, the companion to little Catherine? Yes, I am. I have not had the honor. Will you permit me to present myself? Henri, Henri, racontez leur le discours de Monsieur Van Rijn ce matin. Le discours? Oui. Quel discours? Oui, il y a eu un I imagine that ever so many parties are being planned for you and dear Harmon. Oh, yes. The De Winter giving a soiree for us next month. Everyone will be there, simply everyone. Good evening. Good evening. May I sit with you? We'd be charmed. My name is Miranda Wells. I am Cornelia Van Borden. My sister Elizabeth Van Borden. Miss do? Helena Van der Hyde. How do you do? We were just discussing dear Cornelia's wedding to Harmon Van Brock. Do you know Mania Van Brock, Miss Van... Wells? No, I'm afraid I don't. You see, I don't know anyone here. Really? Where are you from? Connecticut. Connecticut? That's in the West, isn't it? Why, no, it's right next to New York State. My sister means that it's across the river. Which river? The Hudson, of course. You see, Miss Van Wells, just well. There are other rivers, you know. Do you know a city in Connecticut called Greenwich? Oh, yes, very well. I live there. It's also called Horseneck. Horseneck? What an incredible name. It seems ever so much more polite to say Greenwich. Well, it's mostly the farmers that keep calling it Horseneck. 
Tell me, Miss Van Wells. Just plain Wells. How is dear Victoria Skirmerhorn? Victoria Skirmerhorn? You know Victoria Skirmerhorn, of course. I know of Victoria Skirmerhorn, but I'm afraid I've never met Victoria Skirmerhorn. But you live in Greenwich. Well, you see, I don't live in Greenwich. My father owns a little farm just outside. Your father is a... is a farmer. Who is his patroon? There aren't any patroons in Connecticut. Why not? Because there just aren't any. I think that's very odd. I don't. I think my father would rather own half an acre of barren rock in his own name than work the richest land in the world for somebody else. You're raising your voice, Miss Van Wells. It's just plain Wells. And I'll raise my voice if I like. What makes you think you're so much better than I am? We never said we were. The thought seems to have originated with you. And what's more, I never even heard of Victoria Skirmerhorn. Is there anything I can do for you? No, thank you, Magda. Of course, it's only my humble opinion, but I think you're the most beautiful lady at the ball. That's very kind of you, Magda. All of the servants think so. I can't understand why you haven't danced every dance. Then I suppose most of the gentlemen I've spoken for. Are you enjoying the kermess of the upper classes? Very interesting to watch. As if I were visiting a different world. And I suppose everyone has commented on your gown and how beautiful you look. Not everyone. Do you like it, Nicholas? Very much. And do you think I'm beautiful? The most beautiful lady at the ball? Yes, I do. Thank you. I'm very grateful. You haven't answered my question. Are you enjoying the ball? I said it was very interesting to watch. That's not an answer. Well, then, no. Why not? You know that answer as well as I. Because my name is just plain Wells, and I'm off a farm, and I don't speak French, and I don't belong. That's nonsense. Of course you do. I'm as good as any of them. Better. But it's the wrong river. I'm not from the top of the Hudson. I'm from the Connecticut River bottom. Oh, I've made such a fool of myself. Dance with me, Miranda. I can't go back in. It'll be all over the place by now. They'll laugh at me. I doubt that very much. But you don't know. I know that you'll be with me, and that if anyone laughs, will laugh. Dance with me. I'm afraid. You must never be afraid of anything with me, Miranda. Enjoying the ball, Miranda? Well, aren't you going to answer my question? I can only think of one thing to say, and you won't like it. Say it anyway. Golly, most. <laughs> <laughs> Miranda. 
The lightning seems to set the mountains on fire and they roar back. That's all very romantic, I'm sure. But it doesn't help my cold. It's never been this bad. <laughs> it seems no different from your usual winter attack. But we've always closed the manor in the winter and gone to New York. Now I'm sick. If I must be here, why can't I even have Dr. Hamilton to look after me? storm lets up and the roads are passable. storm lets up. They never stop in these dreary Catskills. Come in. What do you want? When Herr from Ryan asked that this be brought to you. Why, Nicholas, it's your favorite oleander. I thought it would brighten your room and perhaps make your stay in bed less unbearable. Thank you so much. I can't remember when anything has pleased me more. How alive it is. As if it were thinking, as if it had thoughts of its own and desires of its own. I know how greatly you treasure it. And I'm all the happier that, that you thought to bring it to me. And I'm happy that you're happy, my dear. Now I'm sure that you'll want to rest. Nicholas. Yes? You're going to your tower room again, aren't you? Yes, why? The servants must think it strange that you spend so much time up there. And I find it strange that you should think about what they think. What could you possibly do up there? Possibly? Anything from pinning butterflies to hiding an insane twin brother. Actually, I read. I hope that my explanation satisfies you. I'm sick. Haven't you even let Dr. Hamilton know? Your happiness at the Oleander seems to have faded pretty quickly. Well, you can't imagine what it's like to be sick in this miserable, drab house. I cannot imagine the dragon we could be either miserable or drab, except to those who reflect misery or drabness from within themselves. Is Dr. Turner. No one has sent for a doctor. Turner, what does he want? He's come to see you. He says it's most urgent. My regrets to Dr. Turner. I am engaged and cannot be disturbed. Yes, my dear. Never mind. Sorry to intrude like this, Mr. Van Ryan, but it's most important. Yes? Klaus Bleeker's been arrested for murder. It's a pity you weren't there to stop him this time. I was there. He didn't kill anyone. There was an anti-rent riot at Smoky Hollow. Klaus wasn't anywhere near the boy that was killed. But they blamed it on him. If by they you mean the patroons, you must also mean me. The farmers aren't going to stand for this. They've threatened to storm the Hudson Jail. With shouts of liberty, equality, fraternity, I take it. Just what is it you want me to do, Doctor? Help my enemy to defeat me? I want your assurance that Klaus Bleeker will have a fair and just trial. Let me make my position clear, Dr. Turner. Whether Klaus Bleeker lives or dies is of no more concern to me than my life was to him, or you. That seems to be perfectly clear. Good evening. Good evening. Won't you stay for dinner, Doctor? No, thank you. Miranda, have Tompkins set another place. I'd rather not, if you don't mind. Perhaps I spoke a little hastily, Doctor. I might be able to help. Well, that's a pretty sudden change of mind. What brought it on? I assume that John Van Buren is to prosecute the trial, is he not? Yes. He's a close personal friend of mine. You still haven't told me what changed your mind. Dr. Turner, you have my assurance Klaus Bleeker will have a fair trial. Now you might do something for me. Mrs. Van Ryan has a severe cold. Will you help her if you can? Yes, certainly. I'll show you to her room. 
to take a bit of scraped onion and sugar for that cough. And these drops is directed. You'll be fine in a few days. A few days? Dr. Hamilton always kept me in bed for at least two weeks. He's probably right, but with most of my patients, it's all I can do to keep them in bed while I examine them. A lighter diet might help. Soup, tea, boiled eggs, less cake. That's nonsense. It's common knowledge that one should stuff a cold. I'll eat all I please. Well, you get well faster without it, but you get well anyway. What a beautiful Leander. I'm relieved to know you find so little cause for alarm, Doctor. It's just a head cold. Do you think you could find your way down alone? If you and Miranda will wait dinner for me, I'll visit a while longer with Mrs. Van Ryan. Yes, of course. Good night. Dr. Hamilton usually encourages you to eat. But then, of course, he has the tolerance of experience and age. Turner is young and relentless. You... You told him you wanted to stay and visit with me for a while. What did you mean by that? Precisely what I said. Just to stay and be with me? Hmm. Oh, Nicholas, you confuse me so. Sometimes when you bring me flowers and smile at me, I think... What? That you like me and, and want me. And sometimes... Yes? I feel that you hate me and would like me to die. Nicholas. Yes? Do you think, could we go away together? Away? Alone, just the two of us, when I'm well again. Of course we will, my dear. As soon as you're well again. I feel well enough already. In that case, even Dr. Turner would approve of your finishing your dinner. Shall I bring your cake? Oh, yes, thank you. You know, it's funny. The day we first met, last summer at the Kermes, I thought we had very much in common. As time went on, we'd have more and more. But the way it worked out, frankly, right now, I don't think you have the slightest idea what to talk to me about. It's funny, isn't it? Would you care for some sherry wine, Doctor? No, thank you. I believe I'll have a glass. Forgive me, please. We fell to reminiscing, and it wasn't until Magda came in that I remembered you were waiting. We shall dine at once. Of course, Doctor, you're not to think of starting back on a night like this. You'll stay over. No, really, we'll I have consider your objections overruled and the matter settled. I was a little girl. I used to imagine things so hard that I thought they were real. But don't you see, if there were anything, I'd hear it too. It's dark now. Of course it has. It never started, really. Oh, I'm so tired. What is it? It's Mrs. Van Ryan. She's very sick. Tell me, what happened? About an hour ago, she woke up and started to rage. 
Oh, the pain must have been terrible. Maggie, what's the matter? It's Mrs. Van Ryan. Oh, she was moaning so. Did she take any medicine before I gave her? No. You'd better send for Mr. Van Ryan. I have. sense. Are you sure she took nothing but those drops I left? Now, while I was with her, sir. And except for Magda, no one was with her but me. I gave her some cake. Acute gastritis. It's possible, but I don't believe it. Is it also possible that she may have been more ill than you imagined when you examined her, Doctor? Yes, that's always a possibility, I'm afraid. See that the pastor is notified at once. And have him come to me. She's smiling. I'm sure he didn't mean that you were to blame. Whether he meant it or not. I don't know why she died. That's shameful, isn't it? For a doctor not to know. It's funny the way she ate. Almost passionately, as if she wanted from eating what she couldn't have. You better get some sleep. Good night. Good night. Remember how the chapel bell rang on the day Johanna and I were married? Tonight it is soft and sad, but then it was loud and ugly and my head ached with the noise. Johanna laughed and said it was a heavenly bell that would ring for us until death. We were never happy, but our life together was tolerable until Katrine was born. And then we knew that Johanna could have no more children. That I was to have no son. That there were to be no more Van Rynes after me. That I was to be the last. I... I wish I knew something that I could say that would help you. I want to so much. Do you, Miranda? At an unhappy time like this, it must be difficult, I know, to think of anything else. But what has happened was beyond human control, Nicholas. You must have faith. In God, I intend. I must not feel that my life is finished. And I won't. As long as you are with me. The bell has stopped now. It must be nearly dawn. Miranda, you've known as well as I that this was inevitable that we were inevitable. I didn't know who you were, or what, or where. Out of all this world, why should I have called to you and no one else? And why should you have come to me and no one else? It's because you were meant to. You knew it the instant our eyes first met and everything within us met. And you know it now. 
You have no right to say that, to talk like this, please. You couldn't help yourself any more than I. Am I right? Tell me that I'm wrong. Forgive me, then, if you can. I had no right to speak as I did. And you have every reason to be angry with me. But I had to say it. There was no way for me not to. And no one but you to hear it. Good night, Mary. Good night, Nicholas. I just heard the news that you're going away. Why, Jeff Turner, I never thought you'd go to all this trouble to say goodbye. That's just it. I don't want to say goodbye to you. But, Jeff, I'm going home. Well, that isn't what I mean. I think it's fine that you're going back to your folks. What I mean is, Greenwich isn't so very far away after all, is it? I know, Jeff, it isn't. And I was thinking that maybe I could come there and visit you in a month or so? Of course, Jeff, whenever you're passing through. Would next week be too soon? Well, I... I know our relationship hasn't been exactly... Well, I've teased you mostly and sometimes made you angry, but I've always thought that in time I could show you how I really felt. And that maybe... Miranda, you understand what I'm getting at, don't you? Yes, I think I do. I'd like to think that in time... Jeff, I... I said in time... Is it that hopeless? I don't know what to say. Well, there's, there's not very much you can, I guess. Well, have a nice trip. Thank you, Jeff. Good night and Seth, get to the pump before they come in the house. <laughs> come inside, I want to talk to you. Close that door and come over here and sit down. That was a nice sermon today, Pa. Strange you should say that. Struck me you weren't listening too hard. I heard every word. Struck me your mind wasn't on it at all. Where is your mind? What's the matter with you? Nothing's the matter, I tell you. April. Now, Abby, I'm going to get to the bottom of this. I've made up my mind. But if there's nothing the matter, You April. were the first to see it for months. You're fretted and worried. Miranda can't sleep. She won't eat. She can't smile anymore. Talk to her, Ephraim. All right. I'm talking. Since the day you drove in here in that fancy rig, you've been no more one of us than if you'd never come home at all. Ephraim, please. You hung your fancy outfits in the closets and you acted like you never took them off. You won't sleep when you won't eat because your home's not fine enough. And you won't be happy because we're not fine enough. That's not true. It's got nothing to do with that. What has it to do with then? Sometimes when a woman's unhappy, she just can't talk about it, Ephraim. Are you going to tell me it's a man? What man, I'd like to know. She's given frostbite to every mother's son in the county. Perhaps the right one hasn't come along yet. Well, she won't find him with her nose stuck in the air, wanting what she can't get. 
A woman ought to get a man first and then want him. Someone wrote in the gate. Here's a message for Ephraim Wells, Esquire, from Weed's Tavern in Greenwich. Who's it from? I don't know, but I can tell you how to find out. Read it. I'll be concerned if this don't beat all. Nicholas Van Ryan is stopping in Greenwich and is coming here this afternoon to see me on a matter of the greatest importance. Cousin Nicholas in Greenwich? What in Tunket could he want, huh? Miranda? Mr. Wells, how do you do? Nicholas. Just what is the meaning of this? May I speak with you alone, Mr. Wells? I consider your behavior exceedingly strange. On the contrary, it couldn't possibly be more conventional. Sure, Mr. Van Ryan certainly handled Pa. This matter doesn't concern you, not get What did you think of him, Ma? I don't know. We weren't even introduced. That was just in the excitement of the moment. He's such a perfect gentleman. He'd never be impolite to you. I'm sure he has fine manners. He's... He's come to ask Pa. He wants to marry me. I know. How do you know? Ever since you've been home, you've never brought his name up once. A woman's apt to be that quiet about a man she loves. Besides, you've ironed that dress every week now for two months. Miranda, child. Yes, Ma. You love him very much. Of course I do. Are you sure? Why do you ask that? It's just... Maybe I shouldn't have let you go. Maybe Dragonwick should have stayed something to read about and dream about. My dreams came true, Ma. Can't you see? Ever since I was a little girl and built a castle in an apple tree. But you can't marry a dream, Miranda. What about him? Do you love him? But it's all Nicholas. Nicholas is all of it. You're acting so strangely. Almost as if you were afraid. Miranda, Abigail, come on in here. Says he wants to marry you. Says you know all about it. Yes, Pa. Have you considered that your mother and I might object? I have already pointed out to your father at some length that there are no valid objections. And I have already pointed out to you, sir, that I'll make up my own mind. What do you think, Abby? I don't think thinking has anything to do with it anymore, Ephraim. It's something that is, and we must make the best of it. I want to apologize for my rudeness when I entered your house. My only excuse is that I saw nothing and wanted to see nothing but Miranda at that moment. I can understand that, Mr. Van Ryan. You're forgiven. Thank you. I think you should know that I have already called at your parsonage and engaged the Reverend Clark to be here tomorrow afternoon at 3 o'clock. Tomorrow? It's indecent. It's too soon. I want my girl married in a church like a good Christian. I'll have no hole and corner wedding here. She has nothing ready, no wedding gown. For once, we will let the ceremony outshine the costume. Whatever dress Miranda wears will be forever cherished as her wedding gown. Hmm. A lot of pretty words. Too many for me. Miranda, you've got plenty at stake here. You'd better say something. I'll do whatever Nicholas thinks best. 
so be it. Amen, Mr. Wells. And now I must return to Greenwich. Miranda, will you walk with me to my carriage? Until tomorrow, then. Goodbye. Which carriage have you sent to meet Mr. Van Ryan at the landing? The lander, madam. Have the grooms their new uniforms? Yes, madam. Here are the menus for the week. Thank you, madam. And Mrs. McNabb, I've just written Miss Catrine that we found her doll. Please be sure that it's packed carefully. I wouldn't want anything to happen to it. Certainly, madam. We'll let the linen room go until this afternoon. Perhaps you should let it go until tomorrow, madam. What with Mr. Van Ryan coming back and everything? I won't overdo it. And remember, not a word to Mr. Van Ryan about everything. I want to be the one to tell him. Of course, madam. Welcome back, sir. How did you find New York? Unbearable, thank you, Mrs. McNabb. Nicholas. How lovely you are. I'd almost forgotten how lovely you are. I'm not when you're not with me. I'm not anything. Three long weeks. Have you missed me? Have you been well? I missed you terribly. And everything has been just fine. As a matter of fact... I'm having our townhouse entirely redone. A new music room. We must plan a series of entertainments for the winter Mrs. season. Mrs. McNabb said I'd find you here. Oh, I beg your pardon. I didn't know. That's all right, Peggy. This is Mr. Van Ryan. Was it anything important? Uh, well... It was just to remind you that you ate none of your breakfast this morning. And all your favorite dishes, too. We won't talk about food, if you don't mind. You'll eat every bite of your lunch, or there'll be quite a bit of talk. You carry on as if you'd cooked it yourself. Me? I couldn't cook the bottom of a pan. But she managed to burn my best India muslin negligee. That I did, sir. The ironing is worse than the cooking. And she ruined it completely when she tried to sew it together again. True. Me sewing is even more horrible than me ironing. What would I be wanting with the likes of a greenhorn like you? Can you tell me? That I can't. But you'll eat your lunch just the same. And what was that strange little creature? That was Peggy. Peggy O'Malley. I assumed it had a name. What was it doing here? I've engaged her as my personal maid. Your maid? That untidy little cripple? She's not untidy, and her leg's no fault of hers. She's had a miserable life. It's the strangest recommendation I've ever heard. She's bright and willing and good to me, and Nicholas, I want her as my maid. I shall have McNabb give her some extra money and a good character. It's so little to ask. Please, Nicholas. Deformed bodies depress me. Perhaps I can divert your attention with this. I brought it for you from Mr. Tiffany's new shop. How dare you say that? How dare I? You speak as if her crippled leg were a weakness on her part rather than merely God's will. We'd agree then it is God's will. Now perhaps we can discuss your plans for the care mess ball. Are they progressing nicely? Madame de Clos swore to me that your gown will be finished and delivered to you in time. She needn't overwork herself. It's very likely I won't need it at all. What do you mean? The Van Borden sent their regrets yesterday. Their regrets. A previous engagement or some illness in the family. I forget what excuse they used. I see. That makes the eighth refusal in four days. It's only because of me. Because you married me. Miranda. You are Mrs. Nicholas Van Ryan. You will be with me wherever I am always. Luncheon is served. Uh... Thank you, McNabb. Nicholas. Yes? Sometimes, sometimes I think that they, that we... That we what? I think about that night, the night she died. But 
What about that night? It was so soon after. Perhaps we should have waited to decide. In the hope that our gossip-mongering neighbors would be more approving. I don't care whether they know, Nicholas. It's just that we do, and, and so does God. I've never heard you speak so childishly, Miranda. You might well be on your father's knee. Do you believe there is a God who spends eternity snooping on human behavior and punishing all violators of the pastor's latest sermon? That's not what I mean at all. Well, what do you mean? Well, well, I believe that God has put a sense of right and wrong within all of us. And that when we do wrong, no matter if no one else knows, we do. And you've remembered that ever since your Sunday school days, haven't you? That's a good girl. Now let us enjoy our lunch. Nicholas, you do believe in God. I believe in myself and I am answerable to myself. I will not live according to printed mottos like the directions on a medicine bottle. Would you like me to say grace? That won't be necessary. Then I shall begin our salad dressing. What possible excuse can you have for humiliating me like that? Miranda, what is the matter with you? I believe in God. It is your privilege. I have no intention. And so will my child believe in him. Miranda. And I will pray to God to make him healthy and strong and happy. Miranda, is it true? Yes, are you glad? And now may I have Peggy as a reward, if nothing else? Have I done something to please you at last? Celebrating. I'm gonna celebrate too and get drunk. John Young's our new governor, and the farmers of New York State have got a right to celebrate and get drunk. Hand me up my ancestral chair. <laughs> Take off your heads in the presence of the Paul Troon. <laughs> Tom Wilson, come forward, bringing all your money and all your crops, and thank the good, kind Paul Troon for taking them off your hands. <laughs> I don't have to know more. John Young's the governor, and the Constitution's been changed. I can buy my farm. It's the law. <laughs> Dr. Turner, will you come with me at once to Dragon Week? We need you urgently. Is anything wrong? Mrs. Van Ryan is having a baby. Her time is here. Dr. William Brown has been staying at the manor. I had him come from New York. He's a fine doctor. He's a fool. I beg you to come. There are certain symptoms. Have you any reason to think she's in danger? Mrs. Van Ryan, I don't know that she... Doctor, nothing must happen to my son. All right. She's been took bad, and they won't let me near her. Please, let me go to her. What is it, Dr. Brown? What has happened? Everything's quite all right, Mr. Van Ryan. Quite, quite. Are you certain? I assure you. Dr. Turner, I want you to take every precaution. Mr. Van Ryan, would you and the nurse step out while I consult with Dr. Brown? I can see no reason Your for presence me. here can only be upsetting to you and to us.
Dr. Turner, thank heaven you've come. I can't assume this responsibility alone any longer. The man's a maniac. I think he'd kill me if anything went wrong. Nonsense. My dear fellow, you just don't know. When I tried to resign from the case and return to New York, he had me locked in my room. He watches me all the time through those icy eyes of his. Sometimes I think he's mesmerizing me. Have you been giving a lot of Yes. As far as he is concerned, everything's quite normal. There is an irregularity in the child's heartbeat. But as you know, it's sometimes hard to catch through the stethoscope. Yes, it often is. I think I'll wait until she wakes a little before I examine her. In the meantime, Doctor, why don't you get some rest? If you'll take over for a little while. My room is just down the corridor. I will call you if you need it. And don't worry. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. I don't know whether to believe this or not. You can believe it. Are you going to take care of me now? Yes. I'm going to take care of you now. That's good. It's... Uh, it'll be all right now. I'm not afraid anymore. Don't be afraid. Call Dr. Brown. Jeff, help me. I'll always help you. Van Ryan, there's something you must know. Your son is not well. I can't tell you how sorry I am, but at least your wife has come through beautifully, and in time, there's no reason why you can't have other babies. My son is entirely well, Dr. Turner. I appreciate your services, and you will be suitably recompensed. But he can't live. His heart is malformed. It's a miracle he wasn't stillborn. It's nobody's fault. Nothing could have prevented it. It's just a tragic accident. You will find a carriage waiting to take you to your home. You just won't face facts, will you? You'll never believe anything you don't want to. And there is no reason for you to see Mrs. Van Ryan again. Good day, Doc. Adrian Peter van Rijn, I baptize thee in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We yield thee hearty thanks, most merciful Father, that it hath pleased thee to regenerate this infant for thy Holy Spirit, to receive him for thine own child by adoption, and to incorporate him into thy holy church. Amen. Please accept my most sincere congratulations, Mynheer van Rijn. Thank you, Dominic. You understand, of course, that this house ceremony was only at the insistence of Mrs. Van Rijn. In a month or two, my son will be properly baptized in the Dragonwick Church. Of course. No, Nicholas. We can thank God that he was baptized just in time. Should I light some candles? No, I like to sit here in this half dark. 
you'll ruin your eyes. How long has he been up there this time? A week, perhaps more, ever since he got back from New York. And before that... I'm sure it isn't very pleasant for him, Peggy. And what is it for you? Shut up there for weeks on end without a word or a sound. If it was any man but him, I say he keeps a bottle up there in that tower room. Peggy. Yes, ma'am. I'm going with you. Don't be sick. I'll not let you go up there alone. That's enough of that. Please don't. I'm afraid. unlooked for pleasure. I wasn't expecting you. Frankly, I'd almost succeeded in forgetting you. Don't be frightened. I'm not frightened. I'm sure you're not. You have courage, Miranda. I like that about you. It must have taken a great deal to make this pilgrimage up to the mysterious tower room. I assume your twisted little friend is offering up suitable prayers for your safe return. I see no reason why they should be necessary. Tell me, are you disappointed in what you found here? I'm sure you expected velvet drapes and heathen idols, an altar for human sacrifice, at least. Nicholas, what do you do here? What do I do? I live. I'm sure you mean a great deal by that, but... but it isn't very clear to me. Didn't expect you to understand. How could you? Don't be offended. By ordinary standards, you're quite intelligent. But I will not live by ordinary standards. I will not run with the pack. I will not be chained into a routine of living which is the same for others. I will not look to the ground and move on the ground with the rest. So long as there are those mountain tops and clouds, and limitless space. I'm sure you are still unable to understand. I want to try if you'll help me. Shall I? Shall I tell you what you want to know? Brace yourself. Prepare to have your God fearing, farm bred, prayer fattened morality shaken to its core. See, I have become what is vulgarly known as a drug addict. Why? No tearful reproaches, no attempts to save me, to regenerate me. Why do you find it necessary? That is what you could not hope to comprehend. It is because I have set free something within me, something that ever since I can remember has been like a rock caught in my heart, in my brain pushing at me, choking. I know you better than you think. Perhaps I have underestimated your intelligence. No, it's pretty ordinary and farm bred. I couldn't follow everything you said, but I think it's pretty simple. You're just plain running away. Is it as simple as that? I've seen farmers with their crops ruined and their cattle dead. And most of them just go to work. But some of them blame their troubles on God and get drunk to 
forget to run away, to run away and hide. That's what you're doing, Nicholas. Whenever you've come up against something unpleasant that you couldn't change, like the rent law. Or the death of my son. Our son. Get out of here. Nicholas, let me help I don't you. need to be helped. Help me, then. Please don't shut me out like this. Let me be unhappy with you and happy again. Let me be part of you. Let me love you and love me, too. Sorry, Peggy, but I'm afraid you'll have to tell Mrs. Van Ryan there isn't much I can do for her husband. Tell her. She doesn't even know I've come here. Then what? And do you suppose I so much as whistle to get help for him? It's her I'm afraid for, Dr. Jeff. Afraid of what? I can't say right out, but there's a blackness in that house and in him. He's coming and going, the look in his eye when he watches her. You've got to come and take her away. What makes you think she'd want to go? Whether she wants to or not. I'm only a doctor. I've got no right you to... You can't leave her there to be hurt and hurt again. Not knowing what she's done wrong or, or how to do right. Happy as a child because he so much as sends a plant to her room. A plant? An ugly looking growth to my taste from Egypt or Asia. Or... Has she been taking her meals in her room? Yes, oft times. Why? Come on. Please don't stop on my account. Your father wouldn't have. I remember how he continued to read so doggedly. Ephraim Wells took his religion without flinching the way a strong man should. Nicholas, what do you want? I appreciate the warmth of your greeting. Quick happiness in your face at my appearance, your pleasure at my company. Why have you come here? And as much as this is my house, must I explain my presence in it? Of course not. Forgive me, I'm... I'm so tired. I'm sure you are. This has been a trying time for you. And yet, strangely enough, your tribulations seem to have become you. I cannot remember you more beautiful than you are now. And your beauty amazes me as much now as always. Your strength, the earthiness of your peasant stock, and more. Your grace, your unexpected look of quality. It would be a pity if we were not to have another. If you were barren. That's a matter of the Lord's will. Oh, yes, the Lord. I'd forgotten. The Lord who giveth life and also takes it away. Why did he take my son's life? I have no way of knowing it that. It could not have been without purpose. No one gives life, takes it without purpose. Why do you suppose you are here, Miranda? By the Lord's will or by mine? What you are is the reflection of what I wanted you to be. You live the life that I gave you. Now, you do look frightened. What are you thinking? Of Johanna. Why? I don't know. Creaking board somewhere. 
it's not important. It's stopped now. But I didn't hear anything. Neither did I. Yes, you do. It's, it's from the Red Room. The harpsichord is ill. Stop it. Then Katrine did hear her that night when Joanna... And you must have heard it, too. And you must have been listening the night our little son... I never believed it, really. But now I do. Passing by, and I thought I'd drop in. Passing by? I see. Summoned in the best heroic tradition by the faithful little cripple. And have you an army of farmers equipped with pitchforks lurking in the garden? No. That fight's all over, and you lost it. But Peggy seemed worried about you, so I... Do I look as if I needed medical aid rushed to me in the dead of the night? You can hardly expect a diagnosis from me based upon your appearance alone. Good to know you have become more careful in your diagnoses, Doctor. I can recall when you were less thorough. I've improved a lot since then. There was much room for improvement. May I be frank? You're not a very good doctor, Dr. Turner. There are too many things you should know that you don't. I still insist I've improved. For one thing, I've learned a great deal about plant life. I would think that human life were more to the point. I've discovered that the two are strangely related. You know, in a way, you're responsible for it all. How nice. We must discuss your discoveries sometime soon. What about right now? Jeff, what are you doing here at this time of night? The patroon and I are discussing flowers. Flowers? And while we're on the subject, I suppose you've thanked him prettily for the lovely plant in your room? I don't understand. It doesn't matter. He does. Is it as pretty as a plant in your late wife's bedroom the night she died? But you're letting the discussion become rather more of a Dr. Turner. I was never able to forget that plant. At first, I thought only that it was very beautiful, but I've learned since then it was also very deadly. Nicholas, what does he mean? It's a glucoside, similar in action to digitalis, but much more toxic. I guess it was a good idea to have a doctor on hand that night you asked me to stay for dinner. Weren't you lucky I wasn't a better doctor at the time? It was all so legitimate. Your wife with a bad cold. She couldn't possibly have tasted anything in the cake. It was all soaked with rum anyway. I don't believe it.
Tom Wilson, Jeb Ribling, Gebhardt, Brown, Berger. Come forward, all of you. I have something to say to you. Apparently, I have not yet been able to make my position clear. I will try once more. Believe me, my patience has come to an end. Lives, liberties, happinesses. Pursue them where you will. Sing and dance and dip them in bronze if you like. But you will not destroy Dragonwick. You will not take away from me what has been mine for more than 200 years. No babbling idiot of a governor will make laws that have to do with my manner, with the manner that my son... that my son will inherit. Oh, it's Dr. Turner. What are you doing here? You are not wanted. You're trespassing. I don't want you here. I don't need you anymore. There was a time when you knew too little and I could use you, but no! You don't mind, Mr. Van Ryan. I'll have to ask you to come along with us. Mayor Curtis, isn't it? Yes, sir. I do mind very much. I have no intention of going anywhere with anyone. This is not a request, Van Ryan. You're being ordered to come along. You're under arrest. I will not be ordered to do anything by anyone. This is my property, and you will all leave it at once. Nicholas, please, this is your only chance. My only chance? How little you know me, Miranda. Even Johanna would never have said that. Dr. Turner, you might use your influence to benefit these men for once and tell them to get out of here. How little you know me, Mr. Van Ryan, or them. You don't believe I'd shoot? Yes, I believe you. Have it your way, then. If you didn't mind, I'd ride alongside to the boat landing. You're welcome to ride inside. Well, thanks. I'd like nothing more, but then I'd have to ride back here and not alone. You understand? Of course I do. Goodbye, Mrs. McNabb. And thank you for everything. It'll be lonely here without you, Mrs. Van Ryan. Mrs. Van Ryan. Suddenly it sounded strange to hear you call that. taking with you? It's all I brought with me from home, except a black dress. The way you just said home, as if you never had any other. 
Have I ever? You answer that. You know, Ma once said she felt she shouldn't have let me come to Dragonwick. But she was afraid. You couldn't marry a dream, she said. Do you dream much, Jeff? Sometimes. Some dreams are very real, I guess. So real that they get confused with reality. And then when you wake up and look around, you find yourself saying, what am I doing here? How did I get here? What is this to do with what I am and what I want? Then I guess you make up your mind you've had a nightmare. And you go crawl into your ma and pa. So it's back to Greenwich now, Miranda, with never another thought of anything here. Well, Greenwich isn't so far away after all. Perhaps you'll be passing through sometime, Jeff. Would next week be too soon? 